Welcome back and let's chat commodities now and joining us for Bank would have gained market share by 24 basis point. As Welcome back and let's chat commodities now and joining us for that is Peter McQuarrie, he's CEO of Extrem Australia. Peter, hi, welcome and I want to start talking about the crude oil prices. While we have seen a bit of an uptick and this is after the Russian oil minister saying that the global markets are balanced and we saw some buying come back. But having said that, this is another week which is headed into the negative. We saw 5.5% decline previous week, we're down nearly 4% this week as well. Well, exactly right, Manisha. I mean, it's been very, very solid move to the downside, and it's just the continuation of softness. And when it bounces, it bounces, you know, quite strongly. Um, I noticed Novak's, um, well, Oil Minister Novak's comments, and he's saying that it's balanced and there's no chance of, you know, further cuts from OPEC plus, or, you know, there's no need for it. So we'll just have to see how that materialises over the next quarter. But uh, I don't think producers are happy at the price, but consumers certainly are. Almost at 75 for NYMEX. I mean, are you looking at further declines onto this one? I wouldn't have been surprised to maybe push it down a little bit further. It's choppy, it's volatile, and, you know, it's hard to find a floor. But it seems to be just, if you're looking at the charts and you're putting your mind back over the last couple of months, it seems to test that low, you know, the, the 72 sort of range. And then it bounces and then, you know, and it bounces strongly. And we've seen those big, you know, big, powerful moves. So uh, I'm just sitting here, Manisha. You, it's short at the moment and uh, it's been a pretty dynamic week to be short. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, while the US GDP numbers came in much lower than previous quarter and lesser than what the street yeah. is anticipating as well, uh, would you say that, that that's exactly what the, what the markets thought it would be? And with next week now about one China Golden Week holiday, two the US Fed meeting, three the ECB monetary policy meeting as well, how are you looking at the metals absorbing all of that? Well, I, I take on board what you're saying and that there's no doubt that we'll probably see 25 basis points. I think that's where it's pretty much baked in from Fed Chair Power. So and 50 basis points, a big chance as far as ECB. So it could be a further softness as far as um, the energy sector. I won't be surprised to see currencies be quite volatile over the next week, uh, especially the likes of the euro and possibly the yen. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting week, Manisha. Very interesting. <laughs> Anything between the metals that you, among the metals that you think is uh, worth holding on on the longer side right now? Well, you've got aluminium sitting at about 8,500. I just made a note of that. You've got, uh, pardon me, 20, 2,300 and, uh, and copper at 8,500. So they've both given up their gains as well over the last few weeks and, you know, softness. So, uh, you know, it's I'm just sitting here observing. Maybe it's a time to buy or maybe if they sink a little bit further, it could be a time to buy. But... I noticed that comment as far as um, forecasted moving out. World Bank expects year-on-year -year commodity prices to be down 21% lower in 2023. So that's a, that's a concern, Manisha, because they're seeing the big data um, dumps as far as numbers, and it's, uh, it tells you a pretty big story, World Bank. Mm. How are you looking at the dollar index? Because that doesn't really seem to be breaking away from the current range. We've seen 101 continue to hold. How would you look at the dollar yeah. index with 25 basis point rate hike factored in? How are you looking at the next one month? What range are you working with? Well, you know that you know that euro dollar index is weighted at about 61 percent euro, and if the euro, if the ECB raises their rates 50 basis points and the and the Fed only at 25, then I think you're going to see a further strengthening as far as the euros euro, the euro which in turn would be softer for the dollar or dollar index. So maybe that, you know, that 102 to 100 sort of handle is where it's at until we see something um, deliberate, then we can be a little bit more, I think, you know, hand on heart. But at the moment, it's just, uh, yeah, hold on and uh, let's see how next week materialises. Clearly. And in the meanwhile, how are you also looking at the gold price now? Because uh, $2,000 per ounce hasn't really held and this is a second straight week of that. Well, exactly, but it's only down a little bit at 1995. Silver's back up, you know, also above $25. So, yeah, the picture, I'm t I, I think we've just got to be conscious. It's wild. There's plenty of movement there, no shortage. And uh, they, it's great for trading because you see those big trade, you know, big moves of $10, $15, $20 over, sometimes over a session or a session and a half. So, yeah, I'm just sitting here seeing it all and how it all plays out, Manisha, and then you can be, you know, 
hold on to the reins and, uh, you know, ride at home sort of thing. But do you think it's, it's 1950, 1930 coming in on the charts soon? I mean, can the prices decline that much? Well, they might. I mean, you know, I'm not going to rule it out. No one can really tell you, you know, whether no one's got that crystal ball. But mm -hmm. I'm not going to be surprised what happens. I'm just going to sit here and just see if we can see further structural weakness for the gold price and when it bounces. But, um, you know, they're big sweeping changes as far as, you know, the, from a volatility play. And uh, that's the exciting part to trade that market. Mm. Okay, all right, Peter, Peter, as well as Manisha, thanks very much for joining in and taking us through that commodity outlook. On that note, we need to wrap up on Halftime Report. Business Lunch will take all the action forward. Stay tuned.